Okay. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Welcome back to our first video in the new shop versus video project. I will be bringing back this poor axe back to life. This is a customer's axe. Uh, don't know exactly how old it is, but it's not a very old axe. I can tell just by looking at it, you know, roughly how old it is. It's probably about a year or so. Uh, the owner of this axe had a house fire, which was just really terrible. Um, and his axe got burnt up in the fire. The sheath is actually what is this, what this stuff is on the blade. So the sheath got burnt and melted off. So the sheath is completely gone. Half of the handle is gone. Um, and the axe head most likely needs to be reheat treated. So this is gonna be a complete rebuild other than forging a new axe head. All this is gonna be done from scratch. So I told the guy, I'll fix up your axe for you, no problem. Um, so that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Why is there like just hair? Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, that's nasty. No, it doesn't feel like it's, it's, I'm doing good at this. Hold on, I gotta find out how long the handle is real quick. Just let me know how long it is. All right. Ready? Ready, ready? Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is take the handle off of the axe head over at the bandsaw. For whatever reason, removing a handle from an axe head seems to be like, it seems, a lot of people seem to have difficulties with that. I don't know why. I'll just show you how I do it. Um, if you're not trying to save the handle, then, which is what I will be doing, um, I'll, I'll walk you through that. But a lot of people want to save their handle, and I get asked a lot of times, how do you save the axe handle? You know, how do you take the handle off, clean it up, or whatever you want to do, and then reuse the handle on another axe head? Uh, the way that I do that is by just drilling a series of holes that are smaller than the width of the wedge. So basically, drill the wedge out. That'll make the, the fit loose enough to where you can pound the handle out without damaging the handle. And then you can, while the head is off the handle, you can finish cleaning out the kerf where the wedge was and then rehang the ax from there. Um, but if you want to completely just destroy the handle, take it off the head, get a bandsaw or a saw, cut the bottom off. Like so. After I cut the main handle off, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the excess on the top too. Now we're gonna go over to the drill press. If you don't have a drill press, you can do this with a uh, regular hand drill. This is a 5 16 inch bit. I'm just gonna drill a series of holes down the uh, eye. Get as many in there as you can, makes it easier. Try to get one more in there. Will it fit? Oh. There it is. All righty. 
You see those holes aren't even coming out the bottom. You can, there's some oil seeping out of it where it heated up from the drill bit. So you can drill some holes through the bottom too. The more the better. Now to finish up taking the wood out of the axe head, we're gonna use a punch or a drift. It's roughly the, the shape of your axe eye. We're gonna knock that out. Those holes will make it a little bit easier to knock out. Still a tight fit. I'm glad that you'll be able to cut that out, Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that's cool. Check that out. Kind of see the, the two wood. So, um, it's also interesting to do this to see how tight, I guess, your axe handle hang was. So, I'm piecing together some of the parts here. And you can see how tight that fit was on the axe eye. That's where the lug of the axe eye was. This was inside the axe and, you know, obviously wasn't touched by fire. Um, <clears throat> but a really good fit. If you look at the cross section of the eye straight on, you can see that it's an hourglass shape. You should be able to pick that up pretty distinctly that slight hourglass shape. That's actually what holds the axe handle on the axe head. This fills up so it can't come back through the handle. And all of my wedges I glue into the kerf, which is why this is still sticking to the hickory, the walnut. Not a ton of glue, but it's enough to hold it in there. So at least I know that the handle on that axe was seated really well and it wasn't going to come off anytime soon. Now that we have the actual handle, wood part, out of the head, we need to reheat treat it because it's more than likely exceeded 400 degrees, which is going to change the heat treatment that I normally put on my axes. I'm not positive. You know, I can't really see any tempering colors per se, but judging by the fact that the sheath melted on the edge of the ax, it probably needs to be changed. So let's go ahead and put it in the heat treating oven. I'm going crazy. Why are you going crazy? I can't, you're filming me. <laughs> I keep hearing the heat treating oven beep go off in my head and the oven's not on. So I'm most likely going crazy. With all the history in this place, it's good. Yeah. So I was at the hardware store last Friday, um, and I just got to talking to the guy that worked at the hardware store there, and he was telling me about the hit, some of the history of the building. Apparently there were some like professional re wrestling matches in here televised, and he had some big names come through this building and do wrestling tournaments. Um, I knew that part. He, but what I didn't know that he told me was that apparently one of the wrestlers that was in here was murdered in the building by an unhappy, uh, you know, viewer of the match, I guess. He took a knife and cut him from shoulder down to waist across his body and killed him dead right in this building. And then I was like, all right, it's time for me to leave. Bye. So. It's probably haunted, and we're probably all going to die in here, Jacob. <laughs>
Story time's over, yep. We're gonna go ahead and throw this in the oven. This is the really boring part. It's not like on Forged in Fire where the inexperienced bladesmith takes it out at like welding heat and dumps it in the oil for two seconds and takes it out while it's still red hot and there's fire burning his face off. It's not gonna be like that. So we're gonna use a heat treating oven and do things the right way. Put her in there. Normally I have this oven full of like 14 axes at a time. It looks kind of weird having just one axe in there. But we'll, we'll, we'll save this just for this one axe here. Um, this is a 4140 steel axe, 4142 steel that I use for all of my axes. So I've got pre-programmed pre programs on this sucker. Program one is for hardening. So we're gonna run that, let it cycle through, let it get up to temperature for the quench. We'll come back in uh, about an hour and do the heat treatment on this thing. While we're waiting on that ax to heat up in the oven, we'll go ahead and briefly tell you about the new shirt design that we have coming out. As some of you may know who have supported our shirt campaigns in the past, these shirt sales directly go to keep the channel, um, keep putting new videos on the channel. Jacob is filming and basically these pay Jacob. So if you, <laughs> Jacob is nodding. So if you, wanna, if you wanna keep watching YouTube videos, this is probably the best way for you to support the channel by buying a shirt. So our new shirts are coming out. Um, they will release when this video is posted. The link is in the description below. So these come in several different colors. I went with just the uh, gray, kind of like a stone gray color. For this one, what we've got all different colors. It's my LH Axe logo made with axes, which is really cool. I actually want to get some stickers made with that LH made out of axes because I think it's pretty neat. And then on the back, we've got a Hoffman blacksmithing logo on there, established 2008. So this campaign is only up for two weeks. You have two weeks from the time that this video is posted to grab yourself a shirt. Again, different colors, all different sizes, you can ship anywhere that you live. So go check that out, that's a great way to support the channel. We'll remind you every now and then during this campaign that you can go check out these shirts and support the channel. All right, let's get back to axe making. As I was saying, when I take the ax out, I'm doing an agitated quench, which breaks up the vapor barrier that forms when the hot steel touches the oil. And that makes a faster quench because there's constant uh, exposure of fresh oil to the hot steel. And also it doesn't overheat your oil, which prolongs the life of the oil. Now that I've got the ax head heat treatment taken care of, it's time to pick a handle. Now his original handle was a 28 inch hickory handle. So we're gonna go with the exact same thing here. I've got a few that are pre-cut. All really nice. Go with this one right here. Yep. Let's go ahead and rough that out with the draw knife. So to rough out the handle, I draw a center line down the thickness of the material. It's just a reference point. Um, I've done so many of these that I don't need to trace the eye. I'll just draw knife it out. But if you haven't done a lot of these, then you can trace the actual shape of the eye on the wood before you draw knife. This just takes practice, but I'm gonna cut in a taper the shape of the ax eye with the draw knife. So I can remove a whole lot of material very quickly with this tool. It's one of the only tools that will do this specific task really fast really well without spending tens of thousands of dollars on CNC equipment. One side done, flip over to the other.
I have a video on my channel from a little over a year ago showing how I use a draw knife. You can go check that out. That's it for roughing out the handle. Doesn't have to be exact. It's just the rough shaping. I'll take that axe head and actually custom fit this to the axe head to get a really nice fit. But that roughing out takes, you know, like 30 seconds or less and you're done. It's such a fast way to do it with such a simple tool, which I think is really neat. There's not many processes that still use hand tools today that where the hand tool is actually like the best way to do it still, or the fastest way to do it still. This is one of those few instances where this tool is still on top. All right, we'll wrap up part one here. We've got our handle blank roughed out, 28 inch hickory handle. We've got the ax head, which has come out of the heat treating um, process. This is ready to be cleaned up and sharpened in part two. So catch us next time where we will be finishing up this customer's axe. And again, just another reminder, these shirts are live now for two weeks only. This directly goes to support the channel, so go check those out. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.